In recent times, this little piece of ground has meant more to the citizens of Burnley than almost any other. It has witnessed the exact opposites of human emotion, great sadness and great joy. In fact, when most people think of Burnley, it's about this place that they think. Burnley has never had an amphitheatre like the ones that used to exist in ancient Rome, but this place is Burnley's amphitheatre, or more correctly, its theatre of dreams spectacularly fulfilled at one time, but spectacularly dashed at another. Not far away, there's another little bit of Burnley, but a very different one. If Turf Moor is the focal point for many Burnley people today, this truly has been the centre of town for most of its history. It was here, at the top of the town, that Burnley first came into being over a thousand years ago. At this point, the Brun has made an S-shaped meander, cutting deep into the natural rock. In ancient times, part of the work of defending this site had been done by nature. A mound of earth, surmounted by a wooden palisade, was all that was necessary to complete the job. The early settlement, timber buildings with thatched roofs, was probably confined to the area of the present churchyard. In the 7th century, St Paulinus is reputed to have preached here. And we know that in 1122, there was a church dedicated to St. Peter on this site, though it's likely that the foundation is much older. In this church and churchyard, there are the remains of the people who've made the town what it has since become. Their silent memorials remind us that the Burnley we have today is as much theirs as it is ours. But this place wasn't always silent. A few yards away stood the Market Cross, it was placed here in 1295, and it was here that the Burnley Fair, which we still celebrate, started over 700 years ago. Eventually, a small market hall, Sill House, was built. The church itself was the meeting place for the select vestry, Burnley's early form of local government. And close to the tower, Burnley's chantry, then grammar schools, were founded. Not far from here, the grammar school boys were allowed to try their skills at the cockshy. It was a cruel sport in which the birds were stoned. The last surviving bird was the winner, and many a lad was proud of his champion. All this was condoned by the headmaster. He received part of his income as cockpence. Times change. No one would allow this sort of thing these days, and neither would we tolerate the operation of the ducking stool which was situated close by, on the banks of the Brun. On the land that was once the home of the cockpit of old, the lower or stone part of the stocks survive. They, along with the whipping post, which is long gone, used to be situated in the centre of the little town. Both reminded those who didn't have much respect for the law what might happen to them if they were caught. And these stones have caught many. The church, the grammar school, and the things that remind us of the past, including this, the Shorey Well, Burnley's first water supply, have been left behind as commerce and trade sought another site on which to expand. They moved here, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a grassy bank in Burnley's modern town centre. The move took place at the end of the 18th century. Before that, the land around here was farmed. The Swan Inn, the oldest building in this part of town, was originally a farmhouse. And on the other side of the road, the lane that became Bridge Street led to the ancient Soak Mill, the King's Corn Mill. The new market was built on part of the lands of the famous Thorn Hotel, when it too was a small farm. Burnley Town Centre, as it was in the middle of the 19th century. 
The Bull, where Burton's shop now stands, is at the bottom of what was then Newmarket Street, itself constructed at this time. Bridge Street is the first on the right. And note Cowgill and Smith's shop. This firm has a long history in town. In the middle is the Gormless, a gas lamp that was first put there in 1823. It got its name because it always stood in the middle of the road. These pictures show you how the town centre has changed in recent years. Recently, a new Gormless has been erected, but an even more important reference to the town's past has been made. The whole of the new shopping centre has been named Charter Walk to commemorate the 700th anniversary of the granting of the town's market charter by Edward I. But the similarity ends there. Charter Walk still has its market hall, but the new shopping centre is an area of concrete and glass, of high street stores, Woolworths, Boots, WH Smiths and many more. These serve the needs of the modern shopper who prefers to shop undercover. At the moment, further expansion is taking place. <laughs> 